It's finally back! Right off the bat, I am so proud of Daryl using that RPG. Although I was really starting to like the main talker of that group quite a bit, and for comic readers, I was kind of hoping that that was going to end up being Dwight. Because just he had that, that charisma with that just asshole personality woven together, which is, makes such, I don't know, charismatic, fun characters to watch. On the TV and I was actually really starting to warm up to him. I could have done without the shit analogy but I actually was really enjoying his character and then Daryl blew him up. But come on we all wanted that to happen. We were all last year going come on come on you have an RPG why, why are you getting out of the truck just blow these motherfuckers away. So Daryl good job. You also exploded tons of ovaries this episode. For some people that were confused, because I know a few people messaged me, that wasn't Negan that was killed, that was just Negan's men. So we haven't seen Negan yet, and a different actor has been cast as him. So I don't know when we're going to see Negan, but I am... I don't know if you can tell by my shirt, I'm extremely excited. So then we jump back to Alexandria, and we did not pick up where we left off with the mid-season finale, which actually threw me through a little bit of a loop because where we ended was hearing him going mom mom and we thought oh shit this is we're gonna come back and the first thing we're going to see is this little boy being torn apart and you know them dying but that isn't what happened so that that was a tad bit confusing and if you watch the talking dead what turned out is that there was filming issues so they didn't have as much nighttime as they wanted and they realized that they needed to do certain shots at night so it made scheduling and filming a bit differently and so they had to rework a little bit what they were doing so that's why if people were a little bit confused why the mid-season finale didn't exactly sync up with the mid-season premiere it was just a conflict of filming and I think they also mentioned that somewhere on Twitter I read or an article. I'd have to actually find it to show you. And honestly, the Alexandrian scenes is what just really made this episode one of the best episodes of the season and maybe the top three episodes ever of The Walking Dead, at least for me personally. I was so happy to see Eugene and Gabriel kind of nut up this episode and start being more productive members of the community and I actually was really happy more about Gabriel because he was either being ignored or shit on in the past episodes this season and he deserved it. I mean to be honest he went behind their back and he, he kind of deserved what he got but then he was really trying hard to redeem himself and we finally got to see him do it this episode. Even though me, I don't have children, so I don't know how people with children felt about this. When Gabriel wanted to take Judith and get her to the church, I was like, No, I, I would never trust Gabriel with Judith. And then when he made it, I felt like shit and was like, well, maybe I was the only one that felt like, hell no, I would not give my child to the cowardly priest that has not proven himself in the past yet to be capable of getting my child to safety. And also for comic readers, I don't know if you kind of felt maybe this was going to change into a scene that happened with Judith and Lori. I thought for sure that they were going to line up what happened to Lori and Judith happening, happening accidentally to Gabriel and Judith, and I'm, I'm actually really glad it didn't happen that way because I don't know, that just would have been a little bit too much. And here's my very terrible thing that I'm going to save this video. I am so glad Sam and Ron are gone, and I know how terrible that is to say. And we knew Sam was a goner, but I didn't expect his death to be that brutal though. So props to them for not shying away from the reality of an undead creature going to town on a victim. And yes, I know, I said undead creature and reality in the same sentence, just let it go. And they actually went about Sam's death in quite a unique way. If you saw the Talking Dead, you know that instead of pausing the filming and putting a prosthetic on the child actor Sam, which would have taken him out of the moment, and we know that child actors can sometimes be a little bit difficult to work with, and I'm not saying that his actor was difficult to work with, but the realism of their acting and getting them to feel the emotion of the moment they're in, and they didn't want to take him out of that moment and away from that emotion to go, okay, stop. Let's put a prosthetic on you. Okay, go, act again. It's a little bit easier for an adult to 
get in and out of that than a child. At least for most children. I've seen some amazing child actors that could rival some adult actors. So what they did instead was, instead of palsying it, they gave the walker that bit Sam kind of squishy teeth, and they funneled blood in through the teeth so that when he bit down they could squirt blood and it looked like it was coming out of Sam without having to pause and then, you know, splice the two different parts together, which I think was very, very well done. Ron? Ron, I was not. Sad to see you go. Sorry, buddy. Jessie's shock at her child dying was also very believable to me. I know they were making her out to be this growing badass, giving pep speeches, but you can think you're prepared for something, and then seeing your child's face being eaten off probably, uh, throws all those pep speeches out of the window. There's probably not a pep speech that can prepare you for that. But poor Rick and his flashbacks to happiness with Jessie, though. He finally found someone, and then he lost it. But when Carl was in danger, he jumped to the rescue and hacked off her hand. And can we for a moment just acknowledge the brutality in Michonne just offing a teenager? There was no hesitation. She just silently came up behind him and just whoop. Which, to talk about that, there was a bit of inconsistencies I believe, and there actually has been throughout this season, inconsistencies and in what attracts the walkers. So we're led to believe that any unnatural movement and sound brings them to your location. And it was a bit weird even in this episode where there were characters that were making more exaggerated movements and sound than Sam was, but Sam attracted them. But then these other characters won it. And I know characters have plot armor, but I've actually been more aware this season that there has been inconsistencies in what attracts these walkers and who gets singled out by them. And it was very clear to me that that was happening yet again in this episode, which again, plot armor. So we kind of have to expect it. Okay, so back to Ron and Michonne. Michonne ends up offing Ron, and in his shock as he's dying, he pulls the trigger and shoots Carl in the eye. I honestly, and especially for comic readers, I didn't think they were going to go there. When they avoided chopping off Rick's hand, like in the comics, I thought for sure that they weren't going to do Carl's eye, especially when it didn't happen with the mid-season finale. I was like, oh, okay, well, they're going to do the same thing with Rick's hand and not chop it off but I was very wrong, and I am very happy. Although there might have been a little bit to do with that, that Kirkman expressed that he was a little bummed out that he actually did end up taking off Rick's hand and wish he wouldn't have done it. So I think that actually influenced the show people because they have said that it would be too expensive and it would be just too hard for the show to take off Rick's hand. So I don't think we're ever gonna see that. So sorry if you think that was spoilers, it's not. They've been very open about it. But I apologize in advance if you think I was spoiling you. I wasn't. I love you. But just like with the Sam scene was showing more brutality than I expected to see, they did an amazing job with Carl being shot in the eye and the whole wound thing and just the whole scene. And again, with Talking Dead, if you saw that, they actually had a dummy Carl, which was very realistic and actually quite scary. And how they explained it, in the comics, he gets pretty much, it's just blown off. So it's just a hole here. It's not like a wound and then he still has flesh on the side. And they changed that a little bit saying that the the bullet ended up hitting right here and then on the bone, I don't know if you can see that I'm pointing to my bone around my eye, and then it ended up ricocheting off and then destroying the eye over here and then destroying some flesh over here. But it didn't take everything off like we see in the comic, which I think also was a smart move on a prosthetic and CGI budget side for The Walking Dead. So props to the special effects department on that gnarly wound and on the dummy that they ended up building and Rick was carrying through the streets of Alexandria trying to get the dummy Carl to the infirmary. They did a great job on it. And in my other reviews for the season, I've been talking about waiting for Rick to have that epiphany that he needed this community and others to be safe and strong that the Alexandrians weren't dragging them down or a weakness. And he finally had that when Carl was shot and he feared he wouldn't make it. Which means we get to see Rick build this community back up and make a real home, not only for his group, but the Alexandrians. Or at least that's what I'm hoping for. And for me, I'm really hoping this is where The Walking Dead goes, where we still have threats. It's not like, 
oh, town hall meetings and back to PTA, whatever, but instead seeing them build a society in this post-apocalyptic world and how they do it and how they pick their leaders and what their kind of government structure is and seeing them deal with threats as a community that's strong together can also be, to me at least, a fun story and a very captivating story. And it doesn't have to be moving from place to place, oh, we're constantly on the run trying to survive. You can still have a great survival story in the apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic world and it be about just building it back up and creating a new world to live in. And to me, I really wanna see that on The Walking Dead them creating the the new world and that's what Rick was talking to Carl about saying you know there's this new world and I want to show you it I want to show you that we can make this new world and we can live in it and we can be happy and, and this can happen but I need you to wake up all right here are some end thoughts which generally are me saying random thoughts I had that people don't agree with so prepare yourself get your hand on the keyboard it's time for me to say shit you don't agree with I legitimately thought Glenn was going to die this episode, especially when Glenn's actor did a thank you to the fans for wanting him back, and his whole thing seemed really off, and he just, he was weird in his presentation and looked uncomfortable, and it made me feel like he was going to die this season, but he ended up living. Glenn, you are one lucky son of a bitch. And also during the scene, it looked as if Maggie could have gotten herself out of the situation she was in, but I'll go with it because they needed drama. Abraham asking Glenn if he could get to the gate with a small smile and a appreciate that was adorable. And then finally, I did not think that the reformed wolf was believable. I don't know if it was just too long of a break between the finale and the premiere, but the whole changing thing and doing what was right just didn't work for me. Maybe it worked for other people, but it just felt really forced to me. I, I didn't believe that this man all of a sudden was like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna look out for you and I'm gonna sacrifice myself so that you can live. It just, just something about it didn't gel with me. And I know the actor said that he believed that his character was more of a chameleon and he was willing to just change with the situation, but it just seemed weird that his, his changing with the situation was like, you know, that guy telling me the story and this woman right here, they're right. I should sacrifice myself for these people I don't give a shit about and was trying to kill earlier. Yeah, that's my motivation. I just, I didn't like it. Feel free to disagree with me. I just, I didn't like it. And then the, the executive director was like, oh yeah, Morgan, Morgan legitimately got through to him. And it's just... I don't know, it was too quick, it was too forced to me, and honestly, I think they're trying to push the Morgan ideals a little bit too much. But no one says you have to be subtle on a, a drama television, right? But what do you think? Do you feel like the wolf's transformation was believable? How did you feel about Ron and Sam dying? And did uh, Daryl using that RPG make you squeal in delight like it did for me? So make sure you like this video, it helps it out a lot. Make sure you subscribe and come back every week for Walking Dead reviews. We also do Comics vs. Show, which I address the similarities and differences between the comic and the show. And I generally don't have spoilers for show-only people, so that might be something fun for you to watch if you want to see where they get kind of their source material from and their inspirations. Besides that, we also have other comic videos, Game of Thrones history and Star Wars videos, and really anything sci-fi fantasy in general. Child actors are a teeny bit more difficult to work with, and I know for a lot of people they complain about the realism, so I think they wanted to kind of nip that in a bud and just make him just go in...